Hey besties, welcome or welcome back. With Memorial Day and 4th of July right around the corner, let's do patriotic DIYs today. I'm gonna to be using two different calendars for this, the Farm Fresh 2022 and the Simply Blessed from 2021. Because on the back, the month of July has two cute little patriotic calendar pictures. And I've got these two little mini pails. I think they're like wedding favor pails from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use the very back of the calendar and just use those little squares where they tell you what's going to be in the calendar. So I trimmed them up to make sure they would fit on my little buckets. This is so easy. I'm just going to take my Beacon Fabric Tech glue, put it on the back of the little calendar pieces, and then I'm just going to attach them right to the bucket. That's it. Do the same thing for each one. Seriously, they're the cutest little decor pieces. You could put them on a tear tray, on a shelf, anywhere you want. They are adorable. Then I'm gonna Mod Podge over the top so that everything is sealed on there. And that takes just a couple of minutes. Then I've got these carnations from the Dollar Tree, white and red. And I'm just gonna take one of each color off of the pick. And then I've got some foam from Packing Box and I just cut up a little piece. And I'm gonna cut that piece in half once I take it off. And I'm gonna stick that in the bottom of the little bucket and then just put the flowers right in there. It does not get any easier than this and it's so, so cute. I hope you guys like this one, I love it. This would be so cute if you were having like a 4th of July get together to make a bunch of these little favors or just put them all over tables and everything. I just, I think they're super, super cute and pretty versatile too. DIY, it's basically two in one. I'm gonna use that fabric from the Dollar Tree and the bandanas from the Dollar Tree and this star from the Dollar Tree, which was kind of new. Also that red and white gingham fabric I was given by my friend Kathy Jo from Kathy Jo DIYs. She's so awesome, you guys, if you don't know her, you need to. Anyway, I'm gonna use my cutting mat and my rotary cutter and I'm gonna cut two inch wide strips and then I'm gonna take those strips and I'm gonna cut them down to six inches. Now, I started off with like 36 of these and then I did add a few more. It really just depends how, how thick you want your wreath to be. I'm gonna take those pieces, I'm gonna fold them in half and I'm going to slide them underneath the edge of the wire on the wreath and push the two ends that are cut through and pull it and that's a lark's head knot. And so I'm doing it slow here so you can see and then I'm just pulling it tight. Now I'm gonna do another one and I'm gonna push the the little hoop end underneath the wire, push the cut ends through the middle and pull it through. And that's basically what I'm gonna do for all of the little fabric pieces that I cut. So you see, I just did the upper left portion of the star with the blue, which is kind of like on a flag, that would be the stars. And then I used my other two fabrics and I did the rest of it. Now I ran out of the gingham, but I had this ribbon that matched, so I used that to fill in. I'm taking my bow maker and I'm gonna use this gorgeous ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby on a huge clearance a long time ago. And I'm gonna make a five inch tail and then I'm gonna start wrapping my loops. Now one side of this is not does not have a pattern, so I'm gonna twist in the middle every time. And I'm gonna make three loops on each side by just going around, twisting in the middle, and going around. And then at the very end, I will pull another five inch tail out on the other side where I didn't already put a tail. And then I will cut that, you know, right at the five inch point. With the bow maker, bows are so easy to make. Without them, I'm pretty much lost. I got mine on Amazon for like $10, I wanna say. So worth it, oh my gosh. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have it in my Amazon store if you're looking for one as well. So now I'm just finishing up my last loop. Actually, that's the tail cutting the five inches. And now I'm gonna stick a piece of jute twine. Now you can use chenille stems, pipe cleaners, whatever you wanna call them, or twist ties. A lot of people like, or zip ties, I mean, a lot of people like to do that. But I just use jute because I have it really handy and it's so inexpensive. And I just tied it really tight, snipped the ends. And now I'm gonna take the two ends, the two tails, and I'm gonna fold them on top of each other in half. And then I'm gonna cut towards the bow at an angle and make a little dovetail, or some people call them tuxedo tails, either way is fine. I'm gonna fluff my bow, and then I'm gonna make another bow, but I'm gonna move my little pegs into the number four so they'll be 
four inch loops and four inch tails and did the same thing. Now I'm going to tie them both together, the, sh the smaller bow on top of the larger one. I'm going to use my jute again, tie that really tight. It's so cute. I love it. And then I'm going to take a little piece of that blue bandana, bandana and I'm just going to cut a piece that will fit around the center and hot glue that and that gives my little bow a nice center. And again, more fluffing. There's no such thing as too much fluffing. You can fluff your bow forever. It'll never be perfect and that's okay, but they're so cute. Every time I turn it over to tie it on, I have to re-fluff it. I just put the jute through the, the wire in the back and there I am fluffing again, big surprise. And it's so cute. Now here's the second DIY within the first DIY. I'm taking this cute little birdhouse I got at a thrift store. I'm using the Amy Howard at home one step paint. You guys, oh my gosh, talk about a high quality paint gorgeous. It's slightly off-white and I love the way it looks. And then I'm going to take my steel from Waverly and I'm just super lightly going to dry brush around the edges and then on the sides and stuff. And basically I just put a drop on my brush, wiped it off on that little towel and then dragged it across the little birdhouse. Now I've got a red marker and I'm just going to write the word USA. And then I'm going to take a blue marker and these are jot markers from the Dollar Tree and put some little stars on it. And then I'm going to put um, a coat of polyurethane over the whole thing. I'm going to take another cute little red, white, and blue bow. I think that one's from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to tie a knot and then just cut the ends at an angle and tack down the ends with some hot glue. I'm going to take that wiry looking thing. I'm going to stick it through the wreath and then put some jute through it and attach it so it sits very firmly on the back of the wreath. And these will work as hangers. I'm loving this. I hope you guys like it. It's so cute. My husband already wants it. <laughs> oh well, it's so much fun to make. I found this cute little triple bird house at a thrift store and I thought, it's really cute the way it is, but I want to make it patriotic. So I'm going to clean it off first of all, and I'm going to take my Kills White Primer paint, and I'm just going to paint the whole thing just to give it a base coat. Then I'm going to take my Ocean Chalk Paint by Waverly and my Crimson Chalk Paint, and I'm going to tape off some sections. And what I'm going to do is above that tape, I'm going to paint the ocean color. So the top portion, including the roof on all three will be in that gorgeous deep blue. Then I'm gonna take my white Rust-Oleum linen chalk paint and I'm gonna cover the, the rest of it that's white. Then I'm gonna use tape and I'm gonna make a red or crimson stripe down the middle of each one of the sides. So that's done. Now I've got these gorgeous napkins and I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. And I just want the stars part portion. It's a triple, a three ply. So I gotta remove two plies to get to the actual piece that has the print on it. Now I'm going to figure out how big I need for each of the rooftops. I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to use my Aileen's Premium Decoupage, and I'm just going to lay down a coat of that, and then each of the pieces of the napkin, and just kind of press that down, and then I'll put a coat over the top. Now once I get them all on there, I'm going to use a little nail file. I'm just going to file the edges just to get rid of that excess napkin that was hanging over and it makes a nice clean edge there. So I did that on all three of the little birdhouses. Now I'm gonna take that same nail file, I'm just gonna go around and distress the whole thing and just kind of get the edges. Now I'm gonna take some Spanish moss and hot glue and I'm just gonna place it back inside. I had taken out the ones that were in there and I'm gonna put that back in there so they all have it. And then I'm gonna add a little jute bow, a little jute wreath, and a little piece of fabric that I cut out that had a star on it, and then another one that's like a little square up at the top. Now I'm gonna line that little, it's like a diamond, I guess, up at the top. I'm gonna line it with some jute. I just wanna embellish each one a little bit. And I think they turned out so, so super cute. And then I'm gonna add a little more of that decoupage around that star and just put some jute around it. I thought it looked a little unfinished. And that's it. Isn't it cute? I love, love, love it. Let me know what you think. tree the one that has the four rings around it just ignore that other ring in the background I wasn't sure what I was going to use at that point and then this rug I got from five below for five dollars and it's all denim jeans cut up and woven into a rug 
oh my gosh, what a great deal. I just cut the black threads and pulled out the strands. And then I got out my square and I measured six inches. I decided that would be the right length for each piece. And I started cutting and I cut them all. And I actually had to peel some more off because it was really hard to know how many I really needed. And I never did count them, but I didn't use anywhere near the whole rug, not even close. Because I only made them six inches, I didn't want to tie them. Denim is so thick. So I kind of twisted it around and put hot glue in between. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one around the end two circles, the middle two circles, and then the inner two circles. And I'm going to alternate back and forth, back and forth, and that will fill in everything. And it really, really makes it nice and thick. And it's time consuming. Just put on some music or a video. And there I am, not quite halfway done. The back looks woven the way I'm doing it. This is called a rag wreath. And then there I am completely done and I'm loving it. It's so thick and full and oh, I love all the different colors of denim and different threads. So cute. Got this sign at the Dollar Tree. It says God bless America and it's got the cute little red truck with the flag in the back. And what I'm going to do is take some jute twine and I'm going to put it around each side of the top piece there and I'm going to kind of hide it in between the little jean rag rug ties and I'm going to put it around the back and tie it and that will attach it at the top and once I get that attached I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom and just go through that little chain that's holding the truck on and attach that around the back and you won't really see those they're just really nice and secure and I just kind of pull that God bless America sign up a little so the denim isn't covering it there I am putting the uh, jute in to that hanger so I can get that attached as well and I'm going to cut off the excess And I really think that this wreath needs a bow. And so I'm going to take a bunch of different ribbons and I'm going to make those, you know when you fold a ribbon so it looks like an awareness ribbon and then you bring the center down? Well, that's what I'm going to do because that's a ribbon I know how to make. And I'm going to use some jute just to tie around the center. And I'm going to do that with several different types of ribbon and then make each one a little smaller than the one before it. And then I will use a chenille stem and attach them all together in the center. And when I get them all put together, I think I'm going to do four different kinds of ribbon here. Some patriotic and then the one burlap. Then I'm going to use a really pretty little burlap lace type of a ribbon to wrap around the center. I'm also going to take uh, two really thin type of ribbons. I'm just going to create tails with those. So that way I don't have to do more ribbon if there's enough as it is right now. And now I've got the chenille stem and I'm attaching them all together. And then, like I said, I'll add those other little ribbons to make more tails. And then I'll take another stem and I'll attach it to the entire wreath and that will be it. Oh, I will dovetail the ends and make sure that they look nice and tidy. And of course, you've got to fluff the bow, so I'm doing that right now. But I'm going to have to do it again anyway once I attach it to the wreath. I just wanted to see what it was going to look like before I added those little extra tails on. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's interesting and it's got nice color. And I think it looks really great with this wreath. You guys will have to tell me what you think. I absolutely love this wreath. It's just, it's got to be my favorite, really. I've already had people say they want it, but I'm keeping this one. And here I am attaching it to the wreath with the chenille stem, poking it through to the back and then twisting it real tight. For this patriotic DIY, I'm using this sign that was from the Dollar Tree. Now I thought the camera was on when I started painting it so that part was already done with crimson and then the white chalk paint. Now I'm going to use the ocean color and I'm going to do the very bottom half. So basically more or less put it into thirds. So red, white, and blue of course and then I'm going to dry it with my heat tool from Amazon and then I'm going to do the sides so that it wraps all the way around in the back so each of the colors you know is there. Now I'm going to take a little fan brush and I'm going to put some more of that white chalk paint on there and I'm just going to very lightly dry brush around those edges because I want the colors to be a little more blended if you will not so stark and I'm going to do that all the way around this little sign as well and then I'm just going to make sure that the middle is got a good coat it wasn't quite as you know heavy of a coat as I want it now it looks better now I'm going to take my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go around all of the edges. I want to distress this a little bit and make the block of wood look a little bit more worn, especially around those edges. 
And I do it on the top as well. It also helps with the blending of that white chalk paint, you know, where the colors start. Now I use my Cricut and some silver vinyl and a couple of different fun fonts, just whatever you like. And you could use stickers or write this or, you know, whatever you want. And I just am going to put One Nation Under God. And I'm just going to put that on the white part. And I accidentally broke my tape there, but that's okay. It's easy to place right back on there. And I just thought this turned out so, so cute. It was very easy to do. Just literally one of those little rectangular wooden signs. You could do this with a you know a piece of scrap wood if you had it. And just put the words on. Like I said, you could write it. You could use stickers. You could trace it. Whatever works for you. But I think it's so cute. It'll look cute on a tear tray or on a little shelf. It's just adorable. And I'm going to run some white paint over the top and dry brush it just to give it a little more faded look. And I hope you guys like this one. For this patriotic DIY, I found this jar at a thrift store that said 1776 had the Liberty Bell, and I loved it. I got it for a dollar. I'm gonna use my ocean color chalk paint by Waverly. I'm gonna add some water and put it right in that jar. And I'm gonna swirl it around and mix it up, and then I'm gonna start rolling the jar like on its side and just start coating the inside. I'm only painting on the inside because I want the outside to stay smooth, and I'm gonna do something else there. Now, I added probably a teeny bit too much water. I don't know if there's an exact amount that you should do, but I ended up pouring some of it out and adding a little more paint in there because it was too watery and I wanted it to be a little heavier. So now I'm gonna try rolling it around again now that I've done that and just kind of wipe off any excess, put the lid back on and I will roll it around and this really did the trick. So I think the key is maybe a little less water. Anyway, once it dried, that was what I wanted it to look like. Now I'm gonna take my white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum, the linen white, and I'm gonna take a little foam brush and I'm only gonna brush inside that oval shape that had the, the raised lettering in the picture. And you just go ahead and coat it and you don't have to be perfect about it. And once you get that on there, I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm literally gonna wipe it off again. Not like a heavy duty wipe, but I wanna leave some behind because what I want is to make the cutout part in the letters in the picture look more visible and see how that's going I just love the way that looks and then I'm going to take another paper towel and put some water on it and I'm literally going to wipe off any paint that's around the oval to make sure the rest of the jar is nice and clean so literally it's just still wet so it just comes right off with water no problem and that's all I'm going to do to that part and it's so easy and so cute now if I had used the color white inside the jar I could have used a darker color on that outside and that would have made it stand out but just a cute little technique and now you can see the picture really nicely Next, I'm gonna take this ribbon and I cut a size that fits perfectly around that base of the jar. And I'm just gonna hot glue it in the front and then like on the sides, just a little bit of drop of hot glue. And then in the back, I will bring the two pieces together and make, you know, a little seam there. And I just thought that was very pretty, it just made it look a little more finished. And it kind of brought the lid and the jar together. Next, I have got this foam scatter from the Dollar Tree. Like I never use this stuff, but I had it in my stash. So I thought, you know what, this would be fun. Even though it's glittery, not a big fan of glitter, but I decided to put the white, the larger white star on the top with some hot glue, just to make it a little decorative. And then I'm gonna take three of the smaller stars because they came in two sizes. So I'm gonna do a red, white, and blue, and just put them right in the front. And I thought, you know, just how cute is that? Just to sit on a shelf, or outdoors, it doesn't matter. All I know is this was easy peasy. You've got to try this one. DIY, I saw a picture on Pinterest that really inspired me. So I'm going to take the tumbling tower box from Dollar Tree I'll use 15 to form the shape of a cross. I'm using my Arteza paint markers and I am going to do six of them in blue and I'm only gonna paint the sides that we're going to see. 
I'll paint four of the blocks red, and then I'm going to leave the rest and stain those with the antique wax from Waverly. I'm going to apply the wax with a dry cloth so I only get a small amount on there. And then I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm going to dry everything off and make sure that it is not getting all over my hands so that I can hot glue the pieces together. I'm going to use my white Arteza paint marker and I'm just going to make little stars. They're just really basic little stars. And because this is meant to be a rustic piece, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I am going to add a second coat because they just got absorbed right into that wood and I wanted them to stand out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to start assembling my cross. And you'll see the pattern here. The stars will be to the left and then the red and the stained pieces will be down the middle and to the right like a flag. Now I'm just using hot glue, which is probably not the very best choice if you want something to last for a long time. So I would suggest wood glue or something very permanent if you are really concerned about this thing breaking. I'm going to be mounting it on a sign, and so I feel pretty good about that. But I just want to mention that if you were doing it all alone, I wouldn't just use hot glue for this. I have this super cute tin sign from the Dollar Tree and it's got those kind of corrugated bends in it. And I'm gonna leave the other side the way it was and I'm gonna put this on the back. That way I'll have a two-sided sign. I'm gonna take my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna start distressing my cross over the paint. I wanna dull it down and make it look older. I'm also gonna use the Antique Wax by Waverly and a little sponge and I'm gonna start dabbing that on as well to help age the look of this cross. I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to attach that cross right to the back of the sign and feel free, like I said, to use something even more secure than hot glue. And then I'm doing a little reinforcement on the other side and I don't want that plain wood sitting there so I'm going to take my silver Arteza paint marker and I'm going to color that in so it kind of matches with the sign. And then I thought, well this sign doesn't look as old and distressed or rustic so I'm going to take that silver and I'm going to go around the edges and then I'm gonna put some on a paper towel and kind of rub it across the red and the blue just to give it a little bit of an older worn look as if some of that paint was scratched off. I'm gonna remove the little jute twine hanger because I wanna add some more aging or distressing to the sign. I'm gonna take a little bit of my white Kills primer paint and I'm just gonna super lightly dry brush over all of the tin. And that's making it look older and I really like that. And then I decided I think I'm gonna do that over the cross because it looked so good on the tin that I wanted to add that same look to the cross itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush the cross, wipe it off with a paper towel, and it's really starting to get that age look that I like and it's I love it. And for anyone who isn't familiar with dry brushing, you just put a little teeny bit of paint on your brush, wipe most of it off, and then drag it across the surface. And you just go back and forth until you get the look you want. You can wipe off the excess, you can add more, whatever you want. And then I'm going to come back in with the Antique Wax by Waverly and just make it look a little bit older and dirtier. And I think the combination of the white and the wax really, really created this rustic look that I was going for. And I'm super happy with it. I'm gonna add back the little jute twine hanger, and this one's done. I love the way it turned out. I love that it's a two-sided sign, and I hope you guys really like it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I think this would be a very easy project to do. another piece from that 3D wreath from the Dollar Tree and these patriotic straws from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to first take some jute twine and I'm going to wrap it all the way around this ring and hot glue it every so often because I need something for everything to stick to and the metal rings aren't really the best thing to do with hot glue. They just don't stick. And then that little sign in the middle, you're a grand old flag, is also from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to cut out my straws in different shapes because I'm going to come up with a pattern. I'm literally just making up my own pattern so you could do whatever you want. This is just the pattern that kind of came to me. And now I'm hot gluing that little sign directly onto the jute twine that's wrapped around the ring and this makes it stay really well. I'm going to start attaching the straws in a pattern about midway down the Euro Grand Old Flag sign, I'm going to do something else across the top. But what I'm doing is taking a small blue, a large blue, and then a small blue, 
And then the same thing with the red and alternating every three. That's the pattern I kind of came up with. Now, once I get this all the way around, I do go back and fill in. Now that that initial pattern is established, I still have gaps in there. So I go back over the top with the opposite color that's underneath it. And again, this was just a pattern that I kind of was making up as I was going and I liked it. And then I cut some of the red straws to cover where the straws all meet at the edges. And I kind of cut them at an angle so they would meet at a point and also down in the bottom corners there. And I just stopped it where the straws ended. I didn't go up and around the entire sign because what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna take some red and white carnations that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna trim them down, and then I'm gonna hot glue them to the jute twine, but I don't feel like that's secure enough. And I didn't have any floor wire. I took some jute twine, and I reached around front, and I tied a little knot for each flower that I added. And that really helped them secure, and I added a little more hot glue. This wreath was so easy and inexpensive, all Dollar Tree. You guys will have to tell me what you think. I think it's super cute and patriotic. This patriotic DIY, I found this white lantern at a thrift shop. Now, do not blink or you will miss this DIY. It's that easy. I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol and clean this off. It was pretty dirty and it came right off, so that was good. And once it's all clean, I am going to take some of my crimson chalk paint by Waverly and I'm just deciding what areas I would like to paint this red color. Now you could do any parts that you want. So this is just subjective to your personal taste. So I did a lot of the stuff on the center there and then I do also go in and I do the very top as well. So I wanted to make this a nice mix of red, white, and blue. I mean, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the ocean color by Waverly and I'm gonna do the, the little handles of the lamp turn in that gorgeous blue color. I love that color. That's it. That is all I did to this one. It's done. It's so easy. I hope you like it. For this patriotic DIY, I'm using my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. I did a printable and some uh, Cricut stencil that I made using the Design Studio. I've got these paint stir sticks that I ordered on Amazon. It was nice because they didn't have the odd shape at the top to cut off. And I'm using my miter shears, another thing from Amazon that I cannot live without. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut down two pieces to fit across the back because I would like another extra support. Now I am going to use some glue to glue the pieces together. It's, it's a glue that works as a wood glue. And I'm just literally going to put a little bit between each of these pieces of wood And then I'm going to take those two that I cut down and I'm going to put some glue on those as well as hot glue But I'm also going to reinforce these seams by going down every single one of them with this glue and then kind of rubbing it in I just really want to make sure this stays and these little slots aren't always perfectly straight So, you know got to do what you got to do So here I am adding the supports on the back and the hot glue just to make sure it stays right away so funny story, there is a woman who lives in my mom's senior apartment building who has a big crush on this guy who lives in the building and he doesn't like people knocking on his door and asking him how he's doing. So she asked me to make this sign for him as a gift and then it would look like it came from her. Anyway, super cute. Anyway, that it just it's just so adorable, the stuff that goes on there. Anyway, I'm using that paint to just do a very light coating. I am going to cut out my little Uncle Sam printable fussy cut around the edges because I want it to be as much just the picture as possible. And then those little stencils I made using my Cricut where it just says, I want you just like Uncle Sam would say, and then to kindly leave me alone. And I'm going to use my ink chalk paint and I'm going to tape around it because I tend to be a little messy when I do this and it seems like no matter how careful I am, I still get it on everything else. The key to this kind of stenciling is go on super light like as little on your dauber as possible, and then go back and do layers until you get it as dark as you want. And you never rub, you just dab. 
So now I'm gonna take the tape off and I'm gonna remove the stencil portion and look how nice it came out. That's really the key, is you, if you put too much on your brush, it's going to bleed, or if you move side to side, it's going to bleed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some Mod Podge down just below that, because that's where I'm gonna put the picture. I'm gonna mist it with a little water, because that makes it lay down easier. It just becomes more pliable, so just a little trick. But make sure your, your printable is very dry or spray some hairspray on it first, just so it doesn't run. You don't want the colors to run. And so I dried that, and then I put my other stencil on, did the exact same thing. And then I'm going to remove the tape and the stencil and all the little pieces that are inside the round letters. And look how cute that looks. Oh my gosh. I'm going to add some jute to the back with some hot glue and a staple gun. And I will have a hanger by doing that. Now this wasn't that thick and so the staples went through. So I just used my little snips and I cut off those points. Be so careful when you do this because they go flying. And then I'm going to take a clear glaze, go over the whole sign. And then I'm going to take a little makeup applicator and go around the edges with my Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel. And I'm gonna also put some on there, make it look like it's just been around forever. And then I'll take a chippy brush and go through the little edges of the wood slats to make it seem like they're worn. And I love this sign and he loved this sign. It was so cute. So I guess it's sort of patriotic in a way. That's why I wanted to include it, but it was just fun. And she looked good for giving him the sign. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. Why I'm using two of the tall white candles from the Dollar Tree. I had already decorated one side of them, but I decided that they could have something on both sides. Now I got these printables for my friend Heidi at Heidi Sambal DIY. I will have a link down in my description so that you can get these free printables as well and it'll be really fun to use. I've also got these little gloves I got at TJ Maxx. You'll see shortly how I create a little skirt for the candles with them. I'm gonna decoupage the printables that I cut out from Heidi, and I'm gonna put one on each of the candles. And they are so cute, they're little tags, and I love what they say. Everything about them is just so perfect for this DIY. And I'm going to put the Mod Podge underneath and then over the top, of course, as you would with any decoupaging. And then once that dries, I'm gonna move on to the next step. Next, I'm gonna take the little gloves that I got at TJ Maxx, and I'm gonna cut off the hand part just above where the elastic is, and that way they can become little skirts. And I'm gonna hot glue down the side so you don't see a rough edge, but you don't see that here in the video. I didn't include that. And now I'm just putting them on the bottom, and they're just kind of hanging off the edge there. Isn't that cute? Like a little skirt. I got this super cute red, white, and blue ribbon at Walmart, and I'm just going to wrap it around the top and hot glue it to the candle glass. I'll do this to both of my candles. To give these a more rustic feel, I'm gonna take some of the very thin jute twine from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna hot glue it right around the edge of the printable. I think that's just going to frame it really nicely, and I'm gonna do that on both of the candles with those printables. With a marker, I'm just gonna add a little dot up at the top of the tag so it looks like it's a tag with a hole in it and I made a super small shoestring bow out of that twine and I did the same on both of them. Now, to further distress them, I'm gonna take my Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm going to dry brush all over, not only the candles, but the printables, the ribbons, the little skirt at the bottom, every single part of this. I want it to look older, worn, like it's really antique. And once I finish with this, these are done and they're so cute. This was very simple. This was a fun, easy DIY. this pewter coddle pot at the thrift store for only three dollars it is so cool and I'm gonna turn this into a patriotic rustic DIY first I'm gonna clean it with some rubbing alcohol and then I'm gonna take my antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to put that on the wooden handle I'm gonna cover the whole thing real well and then I'm gonna wipe off the excess with a paper towel 
I was trying to bring the bottom of this up closer to the camera so you could see what it says, but I do think it actually might be an antique for real. It's super cool. I had to look up online and see what it was. I didn't even know what it was. I think they used to use it for butter and little sauces and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to take another one of those printables from Heidi Sambal and I'm going to take the paint lid and I'm just going to cut the circle from the lid so that I have a small circle. I'm going to put some water on it because I want to make it more pliable to put on this kind of rounded bottle pot. And then of course that fades it a little, which is great. And I'm wiping it off with a paper towel. Now I'm going to get my decoupage out and I'm going to put that right on the surface of the coddle pot. And then I will put my little round printable on there. And I'm just going to kind of smush it down with my fingers and then use some more decoupage over the top and wipe off the excess around the edges because I really don't want it all over the pot. I'm going to use my heat tool to try to dry it a little faster. And by the way, all of the tools I use are in my Amazon store link below. Next, I'm going to take my Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm just going to start dry brushing all over the outside of the coddle pot as well as the inside of the coddle pot. I want this to look super old and worn and then I'm going to take a baby wipe and clean up the printable area a little bit because I have something I want to add to that and I want you to be able to see it and if I leave it super dark you won't be able to see it. But this gives me control over how much distressing I really can do. And if you're wondering about that brush, that is literally a makeup brush that I got at Dollar Tree and it's super soft and so when you go over it with the dry brushing, it comes out just perfect. Next, I'm going to take a red and a white carnation from the Dollar Tree. They were on a pick and I'm going to use that same brush and I'm going to kind of bunch up the flower and I'm going to distress it with the Waverly Antique Wax. And I want those flowers to look like they're old too. Once I have both flowers and the leaves distressed, I'll cut them down and put them on the inside of the little pot. A YouTube friend of mine all sent me this package of stickers along with some other fun things and they look kind of antique and there were numbers on this bingo card on them. So I found the numbers 1776 and I had to cut them out individually and they're rub-on transfers and I'm going to put them on the front of this printable, kind of sloppy and it's just going to say 1776 and of course that's the year our country was founded and there you go very rustic very fun super easy DIY once all four of the numbers are on I'm going to cover them with the Mod Podge so that they don't go anywhere I love the way this one turned out and I really hope you guys like it too definitely let me know down in the comments DIY hack, I'm going to use these really pretty butterfly stickers from the Dollar Tree. I just love them. They, I love the colors. And then I got this lantern at a thrift store for $3. Now it has the candle in it. As it turns out, the candle doesn't work. I even changed the batteries, but I have another one somewhere I can replace it with, so no big deal. And it's just like plastic kind of. It's not a metal one, so I didn't really want to paint it. But it comes apart. In order to clean it, I had to take it apart. So I just used a flathead screwdriver and kind of pried the sides open and that was made the top easier to come off. And then everything else either pulls right out or you just need a little Phillips head screwdriver like those black pieces on the top. I just used a little screwdriver to take those out. And once I took the screws out, they came out really easy. And then I was able to pull the four glass pieces out. And I did clean the glass pieces with glass cleaner on both sides. They really needed it. And then it was really, it would have been really hard to clean the inside any other way if I didn't take it apart. And then there are screws on the bottom that make that little candle come out. And so after I cleaned everything, I took it to the kitchen and just really doused it in the sink so I could really get it clean with a brush. I'm just gonna put two stickers on each of the four panes of glass. Just kind of any way I want. You could use any kind of stickers for this. I just thought it was really pretty. And then I put the glass back in basically reassembled the whole thing. This is almost not a DIY, it's so easy. Uh, put the candle back in, I know it's not working, but I'll figure that out later. I just wanted to get this one done. And then I just put the top back on, it just kind of snapped right back on. And what I decided to do is make a cute little like messy bow for the top so that I could 
use this for like, you know, Memorial 4th of July, but you could change out the bow. I did put a little piece of a mop head kind of rope around that top so it has something to glue the bow to because I just don't think it'll stick to that plastic very well. So I took a bunch of, you know, red, white, and blue ribbons that I had, most of them from Dollar Tree, and I think uh, one might have been from Hobby Lobby, but I think those were all Dollar Tree. Anyway, I cut them into six inch strips and then I just crisscrossed them, the biggest ones on the bottom, all the way up to the smallest ones towards the top. And then I'm gonna take a little piece of white twine and I'm just gonna put it over and turn this over so that I can tie the knot in the back. And I'm just gonna pull it as tight as I can and tie a knot. And then I'll start fluffing it. You fluff this thing every turn of this because it just wants to go back into place. So you just keep fluffing, you can fluff it forever. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a little hot glue on the front and I'm just gonna put a piece of that red, white, and blue ribbon across the top and then attach it to the back. And then I'm gonna take, that gives it a pretty little center. Again, it's a messy bow, you can do whatever you want. And then I'm just gonna tie that around and it kind of camouflages in that white mop head rope and cut off the ends and then I'll fluff again and that's it. It was that easy. You could interchange this with any kind of bow you want or no bow at all. You don't have to have a bow. Anyway, I love it. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. You are truly a blessing to me. You'll have to let me know which one of these was your favorite. And are you inspired now to start creating for Memorial and 4th of July? If you enjoyed this video and want to hang out a little bit longer, I've got another one on the screen. Go ahead and click that. And if you do, I'll see you there. Bye. Bye.